I wonder if I should share this. I don't know where my phone is. Should I share this from my wall? Sure. Really? I think you should. Hi, Devin. Devin from Canada. What's up, A? See what I did there? Why don't you Hi, Adam. share it and then tag me? Can you do that? And then you can see if we sound like robots. <clears throat> We're going to go super, super soon, I promise. Oh, hold on. Oh, okay. Yeah, can you? Yeah, you can do that too. Can you hear us talking? We don't sound like Darth Vader, so that's good. All right, can you just do me a favor and sorry, we're coming. Let me take a minute and make sure it's public. Okay, we have a super important topic today that um, I feel like I've talked about this a gazillion times, like mm -hmm. probably more times than I really want to. Um, I've also written about this quite a bit too. Um, but fitness, so can you do it? You got it. That's it. Sweet. Mm -hmm. And then hits don't back out. No, don't mm -hmm. back out. There you go. Cool. Okay, so we're going to get going here. Um, hey, if you guys would be so kind, or if not, that's cool too. If you think this will help someone, give it a share because um, it helps us get the word out. And I haven't been sharing that much stuff, so if you guys could do it, it would be great. Okay, so today, today's topic is how do I get started with fitness? And this actually came from a question because um, I posted something that I don't usually post on my public page. And sometimes I feel a little bit bad about this, but like I keep, I wouldn't say a wall, but definitely my public page is way different than my personal page. Um, even though I probably have more plant-based friends on my personal page than I do that aren't. Um, and I've been not called out, but I've had people ask me before, um, why do you, you know, focus all like fitness stuff on your personal page? Um, and I don't hardly do food at all on my personal page. And then when I come over to Fat Man Rants, it's all food and very little fitness and inspiration. I hope it's inspiration. Um, and hopefully some education too. Right. Right. Mm -hmm. So someone asked me a while ago why I do that. And there is a super, 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 super good reason why I don't. Um, because I feel like it's not just a, just a meme or a quick conversation. It's, it's actually pretty complicated. And here's what I believe personally. And I might be like, people might disagree with this and that's cool. They can do whatever they want. But I believe um, that the way to become healthy is on your plate. Mm -hmm. um, that is that is the biggest thing. Um, at 400 pounds, if someone would have come to me and said, you need to go run a 5K, I would have like slammed the door in their face and never talked to them again. Um, but I could eat an apple. Like that's something I could do. So mm -hmm. it's not that I'm against fitness. And if you follow me on my personal page, you'll understand that most of my posts are fitness. It's definitely not that I'm against fitness. I mean, I think everyone should be doing something. But my my feeling is um, what I'm trying to reach people that want to regain their health and get their health back, it is on their plate. Yes. That's it. Because um, we know a ton of people that do it backwards. We know a ton of people that spend hours in the gym, and they, they're very athletic. They could smoke me in a marathon, um, but they're chowing down on chicken wings and bacon and cheese. Um, that is not the way to become healthy. Um, are they fit? Yes. But are they healthy? No. So that's why it seems like sometimes there's a disconnect. I'm really not meaning that. Um, I just want people to focus on food. Mm -hmm. And then we'll take care of the fitness. Right. The other big reason is because I feel that sometimes uh, fitness or exercise or activity is not 100% sustainable at certain times in life. Okay, and what I mean by that 
if someone's burning 2,000 calories every day because they're working out for four hours on a bike trainer or whatever, um, that's cool. Like, and they eat like that and they train like that and they have this huge metabolism because they're burning all these calories. And then all of a sudden they go out to the mailbox and trip over a, a rock and they break their leg. Now, all of a sudden you take that, you know, four hours of exercise out of the equation mm -hmm. and they're still eating like they used to, you have a problem. So in my opinion, uh, people can sometimes have valid excuses why they can't get their exercise in, whether they're sick, they're in the hospital, someone else is in the hospital, wh whatever that is. But no one has an excuse to not eat healthy. That's it. That's, and that's my opinion. Um, I know there's people that don't agree with me on that, but that's just my opinion. Food is always sustainable, always. And so that's where my focus is. I agree with you. That was a very long introduction. <laughs> Sorry. But that's okay. Um, so I actually, like, I'm super prepared. I wrote some notes down for this and everything, which I don't usually do. And uh, you took notes, and we didn't tell each I other we were taking so we some things yeah. today, yeah? I'm so, researching some things. Yeah. So uh, we got to go. We got to go fast. I'm trying to keep this short. I'm telling you right now we're going to go over on this one because we got a lot of stuff to unpack. But I remember this story. I just want to start off with this story. I'm going to be teaching – uh, my, my, I'm a teacher, so my job is starting up like Tuesday, <laughs> in two days, and so I, I love, um, I love starting like discussions and stuff out with a story. Like I, I'm just like I love telling stories. But anyways, I remember, I remember when we first got married, and I moved into my house, our house, our house, our house, yeah, that we bought together. Right. And I can remember. Because I did the same job my father did. And I can remember telling my dad all the things that I wanted. Like when we first moved in. I wanted a full workshop in the basement. You know. And I wanted a garage put up. And I wanted all this equipment. And um, I can remember my dad telling me. He goes. You're trying to have what I have. But you haven't worked yet. Right. Like I was, I was at my job for a year. Even though I did the same job he did. Um, I wanted everything that he had, only he worked for, at the time, over 25 years, and I only put one year in. But I wanted everything he had. And, you know, I'm using myself for that example, but I know kids are like that. And because kids don't understand, um, you know, they don't understand the difference between working one year or 20 years to build a life. And it takes a long time to build a life, and it's a lot of work and a lot of struggle, a lot of sacrifice. So... If you can take that story, I feel like what happens sometimes is people see the old us, right? Right. They see the old combined weight of, is it 600 pounds? Almost? Four? Yeah. Yeah. That's crazy. And for the two of us, for the two of us combined weight. I was four years old. Oh, okay, okay. Can yeah, I say yeah. you? Oh, about I see two? what you're saying. Okay. So the combined weight of I never did that. That's pretty crazy. Six, six here. Like I, I even got like stuff. Up. This is us. Okay. They can. There you go. So mm -hmm. the combined weight of six hundred pounds or thereabouts, and then they see us now. And they see you training for crazy races and me heading up to Placid to do Ironman 70.3. And they think, I want that. Right? Mm -hmm. But what they're not seeing is that for the past six years, you know, we worked our butts off. Yeah. Yeah. And so I, the, what scares me is when people see what we do, they're going to go out and they're going to get the Couch to 5K program. They're going to work 30 days on it and decide that they can't even run a 5K. It's too hard. They can't imagine running a marathon. So screw it. I'm done. So my fear is that when people see where we are and they see where we were, they forget that middle part. You know, like my dad's 25 years of service in a company to build a life where he had everything, right? Right. And so I, I worry about that too. So be careful about that. Okay. Or they say that's all you do is you just do running. You don't, you don't do. I can't do that. I can't do the running. Well, that's all you do. Yeah, and you bring up another good point. What happens when you? T what happens if someone like? <laughs> well, I'm not calling out family members by no means. 
Um, but what happens when um, someone sees your weight loss? What's the first thing they credit it to? First thing. That I run. Yeah. That's all I do is run. Yeah. And that sucks too because people, people – and that's, again, why I hate focusing on that because everyone, you know, the, the age that we live in, oh, look at how fit and lean you are. It's because of all the running you do. But really, why are you fit and lean? Because of what I eat. Because of what you eat, right? And I think that's huge, and that's another thing, you know, why I kind of dodge that topic. So that's a good point. Okay, first of all, the first thing I have down here is that fitness is relative, Okay. Right. Mm -hmm. Fitness is relative. Um, and so here's the problem. People compare themselves to and I do this, too. Like, I'm totally guilty. Do you ever do that? Mm -hmm. Yeah, a lot. Right. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, it's part of we're human. That's what right. we do. Um, so I feel like a lot of times what happens is you look at someone's, you know, 5K time and, you know, I've been working my butt off and I'm never going to get as fast as say Josh Johnny. Just, it's not going to happen. Just, just, it's not going to happen. Um, but it's still hard for me not to look at his time and get frustrated. I'm just being honest. Right. So we all do it. But that's the first thing. We, we, we have to understand that fitness is relative. Mm -hmm. um, and what is easy or you assume is easy for someone um, might be impossible right now for you. But that is an easy thing to use for an excuse. Right. Right. So don't let it don't be an it, excuse for what you want to do. Yeah. And we're probably making that sound too easy, but it's hard. It's I think I think it's like training. You have to train your brain that that's their race. This is mine. And, and I from right. experience, I've blown up in so many races trying to hold a pace that I knew that I could not maintain. And guess what? It's a terrible, terrible race. Right. Like with, like in, in I'm gonna deal with. I'm gonna have to battle that in next week. I can't go running next to these athletes that are pushing, you know, two minutes faster than I can go. Mm -hmm. But in my mind, I want to. So it's hard, and then it takes work, and you gotta just, you know, you gotta you gotta find that line where you're pushing yourself, but at the same time, you're not comparing yourself. So with that said, this is kind of a tip, an early tip, um, but you should track your progress. And go back to a month or a year ago or two years ago and see how far you've come and be be happy for that and be thankful. Even so can I call, Can like, because I know you don't like when I do this to you, just like totally blindside you with a question. Mm -hmm. um, but how did you feel the first time, like, I told you I, wanna, I want you to log every stuff on RunKeeper or even get you a watch? How did you feel about that? Want to do it. You didn't want to do it. Like you have no, you're just going to go run, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. Now, can I ask you a question? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> if you were almost to the trail and you forgot your watch, would you run without your watch? No, I'd get back in the car and <laughs> get my watch. <laughs> <laughs> but so what happened? Like, why, why is that a big deal? This is good. Like, why well, is it, so why is it a big deal? I got the watch because I was, yes, I was pushing too hard. I couldn't breathe. And I, I was getting frustrated and it was because I didn't know how to pace myself. And so for me, it was easier for me to get a watch to see where I was and how far I was going to pace myself and then take it a little more each time and move and keep progressing. Right. So at first it is kind of like an odometer for you. So you don't like go out too fast, but now I think you like to compare the data, right? Right. And then, mm -hmm. um, it's funny because it just popped up in memories that exactly a year ago you had a distance PR of seven miles and I can remember pacing you for that at about a 12 minute mile, right? Mm -hmm. in, in two years to see how far you've come um, is crazy. It's crazy. But a lot of that is good to go back now in Strava or Garmin Connect and look at that and see the difference. And that's mm -hmm. huge. You know, then you're comparing yourself to yourself and I think it's important because here's another thing. If you don't do that, it's easy to lie to yourself, you know, where if you have an app that says, well, I only, let's say you're walking. Well, you keep telling yourself you're going to walk tomorrow and then you get to Sunday and you realize that you only logged like two miles of walking for the week. It's a good check too, 
-hmm. know, and you could set a weekly goal. There's Fitbits and all sort of stuff like right. that. Apple Watch and yeah. everything. <laughs> okay, so this is big for you. So, um, and be, don't don't get angry with me, because I'm gonna blindside you again on purpose. All right. So, so I I enjoy swimming. I enjoy biking. I love lifting weights. Okay. I love hiking. I love climbing mountains. What do you like for fitness? <laughs> Running. What else do you like for fitness? Running. Running. Right? Is that bad? <laughs> well, from your well, physical therapist perspective, it probably well, is. Right. Because uh, you really should be doing some strength training right. and stuff like that. But but why do you run? Because that's what I like to do. And you enjoy it. And I see, enjoy. so yeah. that that's kind of what I want to talk about next. So, you know, find what you like. You just mm -hmm. because, you know, like, I feel like everyone is just running, 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 running. Um, and that's great if that's what they like doing. Um but not everyone is just going to go enjoy running. And if you didn't don't enjoy it, um, I don't know, find yeah. something else. Right. You don't have to do that. There's so many other things that you can yeah. do. Yeah. But see, here's why I hate talking about this topic. There's a point where you can say that you don't like doing it. So you don't do it. And then it just becomes an excuse because did you really like running when you ran your first mile? You probably don't. About know. halfway through, I did. Yeah, like, I At mean. first, I did. Yeah, like, <laughs> the first time I ran, like, I thought my heart was going to explode out of my chest. I really thought I was going to die, you know, but mm -hmm. something made me go back and try it again, which right. we're going to talk about in a minute. So I think that's another thing that when we talk about fitness, we're not just talking about running. We happen to both enjoy running and that's what. Okay, so super fast, because we're already been 17 minutes, and I'm really far behind. Um. But I think the other thing about fitness and exercise, um, some people are really into the routine and habit of going to the gym or going on a treadmill, and that's great. Um, but I think the biggest thing about fitness and exercise should be moving because it's a privilege. Mm -hmm. You know, and we learned that. Like we we didn't move. Like we I mean you went for an occasional walk with your kids or whatever, mm -hmm. but we didn't understand until we watched two amazing people get that privilege taken away. Mm -hmm. So for me, like I was complaining about my knees, which I totally had the right to do while I was walking out of a hospital where people were getting their legs amputated because they were loaded with cancer. So for me, um, you know, when, when I look at fitness or exercise, I love like it. Was it fun today? I mean, I don't know what did, you did like a sick, a 16. 16 mile run and I did like I think like a 35 mile bike ride with a two mile run um it wasn't all pleasant like I worked hard but at the same time it was nice to be able to do that right right mm -hmm. and no one was changing a bedpan and we didn't have an right. IV or a pick line in us so mm -hmm. that's huge that's and huge. I waved to my friend today sitting on his porch yeah <laughs> yeah okay so um so here, this is what I'm going to go through this really quick. If you don't know, if you don't know my story, um, I was diagnosed with a genetic disease called Ehlers-Danlos. So my joints are super loose. They all dislocate. And um, I was a mess. That's how I ended up on the couch. That's how I ended up on fentanyl. That's how I ended up on alcohol. And then I started eating, not moving. And that's how I ended up 400 pounds. So that's my story in a nutshell. So what I wanted to do is um, I wanted to say where I started because people ask, how do you start? So they see us now, they see, let, let's focus on me, and then I'm going to ask you the same questions just so you don't get blindsided. Okay. So where did I start? Um, and this is really, like, I don't want to get emotional because I, I don't, I try not to get emotional in the lives, but I don't know why I did this, but I started a little journal. And I just went upstairs and grabbed this, and I want to, my first exercise, my first official exercise where I moved on purpose, like on purpose, like I wrote it down and that's what I was going to do. Um, I weighed at the time I had started losing weight and my weight was 392 pounds here. And the first exercise that I logged in this book was to get out of a chair two times. True story. Mm -hmm. And here's what I did. I was using my arms to get myself out of the chair 
And uh, I broke the handles off my chair at work and I was so embarrassed because I had to get a new chair. Um, so what I decided is if I can sit down and get out of the chair once, then I can do it twice. So my exercise, wh here's the question. Where do I start? What do I do to get started? For me, it was getting out of a chair twice. That sounds ridiculous. That was my exercise. And that exercise was every bit as hard as going out today and riding 35 miles on my bike. Because it was something that I wrote down that I had to do. And I held myself accountable. I logged it. When I came home, I looked at it again, and I checked it off if I did it. Um, so where do I start? For me, it was getting out of a chair twice. For you, it might be walking a mile. It might be walking two miles. But the bottom line is push yourself till you get uncomfortable and then regroup and go back and do it again. So that's where I started. So running wise, um, I had no interest in running. I never wanted to become a runner. I had um, to, to give you an idea if, if there are any runners out there and when people drive by you and either rev up their engines or roll down the window and yell things at you, um, that was me. I'm not gonna lie, that's what I did. I mean, I had no interest in that, which um, it's funny because I wrote a little note here. I don't know, I don't know if this is a swear word. I don't know if we can swear on Facebook Live, but I wrote a little word here, like the definition of badass. Um, for me, the definition of badass was, you know, a Harley, like me on a huge motorcycle weighing 400 pounds, like the loudest engine I could get, you know, car hearts. That was what I thought a badass was. Um, and I never, you know, saw the day where I look at my friend Joe at about 160 pounds, you know, just running like a gazelle thinking he's a badass. And so that whole mental process changed. But running, um, the first time I ever broke a 13-minute mile, um, I lost it. I came home. I hit the floor. I hit the kitchen floor on literally on my hands and knees, and I started bowling. And because uh, I, it was, it, I had worked years to run a 13-minute mile. And I can remember looking at the back of my leg, and my back of my leg was all bloody because I had these straps on my braces actually cut into the back of my leg. Um, that was a big deal. So, again, I started in a chair. Then I started walking with braces. Um, and I fell a lot. You can see that's all road burn. That's road burn right there. You know, it wasn't easy. You know, that's from hiking and stuff. I'd fall on the rocks and stuff. It wasn't easy. So where do you start? That's where I started. Um, and it's easy to just look now, you know, as we're out running, that there was a huge story that built up here. So I started, where I started was two times out of a chair. Um, now, I probably the farthest I've ever run is a 50 mile ultra. Um, you know, Ironman 70.3 is, is kind of a big accomplishment. I did one last year. I'm about to do another one in the mountains this year, climbing mountains and stuff. Um, so that's good. That's where I started. That's where I am now. But there's a whole bunch of stuff in the middle that no one else saw. Okay? Mm -hmm. So where did you start? Well, I always liked to walk. So even when the kids were little, I'd walk. And that was my idea of exercising was to walk down the road, maybe a mile. Um, I did, you know, the kids were younger. So I, I, they'd want to go to the playground. So when I didn't have a car, I would walk them to the playground and back, um, sit while they played on the playground and then walk back home. Um, I did get into walking a little more um, at the park when I had a friend to walk with. I did that. Then that stopped. Um, I um, at one point had did some videos at home but didn't stick with that. And then it wasn't until a few years ago where we, um, so it would be five years ago, where I actually started, um, we did our Tough mutter, so we started getting into some running. Mm -hmm. And then we did some 5Ks and 10Ks. And then two years ago is when I actually really got into running and decided I really liked it and started getting into the longer distances. So... You, your first race was a 5K. It was a 5K. Which was a big deal. I remember mm -hmm. that day like it was it yesterday. It was our first race It was together. our first race together. It was, it was 
crazy emotional, which, which, you know, that that's one thing we should mention about like the running part, in my opinion, has so much community connected to it. And, you know, you put the bib on and people are going crazy and the gun goes off and you run and like seeing that finish line is just like, it was like one of the coolest days of my life. Yes. So, um, mm-hmm. but so uh, you went from a 5k and um what are you training for now well first of all what's the okay. longest distance you've ever run um a 50k which so is that's 31 31 and some I don't change know. miles I remember. okay and now i'm training for a 50 miler next month and you're training for a 50 miler and again you know mm-hmm. three miles 50 miles it didn't just happen there's a ton of work i mean like every weekend you're out working mm-hmm. right um, so that's super, super important. So now you know you know where I started and where I'm at now. You know where Heather started and where she's at now. Um, so I think now it's time to give tips. Sure. But I'd like to say hi to everybody, Brianna and Carolyn and Robin and Faye and everybody else that's out there today. Yes. Thanks for joining. You're the PR gal. And- I hope this helps someone today. Yeah. So let's get to tips. And if you guys have tips, toss them in the comments for other people um, because we can't possibly get to all of them. But um, do you want to do your tips first? Yeah, we had a question come up um, from a friend and she said in the wintertime, um, what if you can't get in the wintertime? What if I can't get out or if someone is home and can't get out very much? So I actually had remembered um, the show that was on on PBS, and apparently it's still on today. I looked it up before we we came on, and it's called Sit and Be Fit. It's for seniors, Um, and I don't think it has to just be for seniors. I think it can be for anybody that's just starting out, and the woman's actually a nurse. Her name's Mary Ann Wilson. Um, She's on PBS station. And if you put in your zip code, it'll give you the show time. So like for our area, she's on at 5 a.m. And I checked Connecticut. She's on at 6.30 a.m. But Why Connecticut? I just wanted to see where else she was airing. There you go. So it said you could just, (laughs) well, because my sister-in-law lives there. (laughs) Hi, Hope. Um, So I just wanted to see if I put a different area code in what would come up and what time it would be on. So there's exercise. Okay, so basically this is an exercise program for people that are in a chair. Well, or just starting out. Or it's just called starting sit and be fit. And I remember we wanted your dad to do this. Right. Because he couldn't get around. And it's exercises. A lot. And I think I think the key is you're moving something, right? right? And yeah. that that's cool. And mm-hmm. that's one example, but if you go on YouTube and I believe Amazon Prime. Right. Too. And I also looked up um uh there's that's the other thing. If you're not able to get out in your home and most of you have a TV, what I was trying to say is that there are shows on TV that you can find. Um, that have exercise programs for seniors. There's also many other exercise programs on TV. Um, If you don't have um, Netflix, um, I think there's some on Netflix, I checked. Also, if you like DVDs and can get out, maybe even before the winter, um, the library has some. If you don't want to spend the money on them, I believe you can check out at your local library for free DVDs. Donna just logged in. And Donna, we were just talking about you. um, (laughs) Also, (laughs) sorry. my other tip was um, there's, we now have so much available to us. If you want a DVD in two days and you have Amazon Prime, you can order the DVD. And a lot of things aren't that expensive. And that's why I was saying if you can get to the library and uh, check out one of the DVDs and you can try it and find what you like. Right. And the, um, yeah, that's the next one. Right and away. then there's um, also Leslie Sanson and it's walking for seniors. She has walking away the pounds for every age. And again, if you haven't been moving a lot and you want to start moving and you want to start walking, start with her video for seniors, something easy Yeah. and just work up to it in your home. And even if you're, 20 years old and you haven't been moving, 
who cares that you're doing a senior program? You're doing something to help. Yeah. Yourself. Well, yeah, I think the idea is, and actually that was one thing that I was going to say, like, and I forgot to, um, there's a difference between, you know, after a workout, there's a difference between being sore. Um, if you do a workout and you push yourself, you're going to have muscle soreness. Um, there's a big difference between that and being hurt. Like, you know, the difference, like, Okay, I did something wrong. I didn't do my form right, or I'm pushing too hard. You don't want to hurt yourself because the idea why we eat like we eat is to become healthy. Um, you don't want to undo that by doing stuff wrong. So it's okay to be sore. And actually, mm -hmm. um, after a while, you learn to kind of like that feeling because that's a that's a sign of progress. Right. Um, but along with the walking away the pounds, um, the Fitbit thing, right? Right. And um, back to if you can't get out a lot, most most of you, most of us. Um, I would say probably the majority of us can get out and get to a store once a week. So if you go to a grocery store, if it's just the grocery store, that's all you can get to in the winter or any other time of the year, walk around the store three, four times, go up and down the aisles, just keep moving. Without your wallet. Well, they're at the store Sorry. to buy groceries. School. So, or the schools, um, it, but we were talking if they couldn't get out. But if you okay. can get out, the your local high school has a community ed program, most like uh, most high schools, and they have walking programs that you can do in the morning. Free. Free. And also, um, if you like to shop, like some people I know, me, um, you can go to the mall, and you don't you don't have to spend money. No. You can walk around the mall. Um, in fact, if you go or, early enough, nothing's or, open. Or That's even, probably a safe even bet. Any any department store, you don't have to just go in for one thing. Go in or buy anything. You right. can go in to just browse and window shop, and you're moving. You're walking around. You're doing something. Yeah, and I mean, really, if you walk, if you walk for twenty minutes, you're gonna log a mile. I like. I don't really know how the Fitbit works, but my mom used to walk around her table. Like, I know that's weird. Walk but... around your house, if you know. Up and down stairs, if you're able to do that, do that a you know few extra times each day. Right, and so and the Fitbit thing is another way to track your progress and kind of build your miles or hit let whatever mile goal you have. And if you're not into the whatever those programs are, um, you can kind of make your own. So like if you're watching TV, just make sure. Do they do commercials anymore? I haven't watched TV in so long. But if there's a commercial break, yeah. stand up and just walk in place. I mean, people will think you're an idiot, but they shouldn't be in your house anyways while you're watching TV. Or thinking you're an idiot. Yeah. I mean, just stand, stand up, walk in place through the commercials, um, and then maybe get to a point where you can flip-flop it and then walk through the show and sit down during the commercials. Um, so I just – I want to um, – Diane just said just – said, um, this is important um, because actually my doctor um, sends me a lot of people with Ehlers-Danlos Syndrome, um, which I realize isn't um, like back problem. Well, sometimes it can be, but there, there's a lot of different, um, you know, issues that Ehlers-Danlos people have, uh, a lot of painful things. Um, and that's why people stop walking and stop moving. But this is what I will say about that. I'm not a doctor. I'm not a physical therapist or whatever, but I know from experience that if my knee hurts, okay, so let, let's say my knee dislocates a lot. Um, and because my knee hurts, if I go for PT, they're going to target my knee. And all I'm going to say is if I would have kept doing that, I would still be on the couch. So what happens is for me, this is just my personal thing. If my knee hurts, um, I'm not going to move it, but I'm going to try to move my feet. And what happens, your body, we try to compartmentalize our body that just like we need to fix one thing and we can't do that. And if I would have stayed in that mentality, I'd still be in braces and canes. Um, because what happens is, let, let's say I had a really bad shoulder injury that would keep, would keep dislocating. Well, if I try to keep strengthening my shoulder, I'm just going to keep doing more damage to that joint. So what I try to do is like work on my fingers, my wrists, my forearms, and build those muscles first. And it's all connected. So once, you know, strength, like strength training is huge for injuries. Um, and also stretching and range of motion stuff. So what tends to happen is if you have a sore back, you stop 
moving as much. If you have a sore shoulder, you stop moving as much. So now you have atrophy in there and you lose your range of motion and the muscles get weaker and the muscles don't hold a joint in like it used to. And now you go to do something and it really hurts. So you really stop using it. And before you know it, you lose 100% of that muscle or whatever. Um, again, I'm not a doctor. I'm just telling you what worked for me is start moving a little bit at a time and work away from the joint and come back to it. Believe it or not, um, it will get less and less and less painful um, as your body gets used to moving it again. But it's very hard to get stuff moving once you stop. I know I got way off on the side, but sorry. Okay, more tips, please. Oh, I think I said the community that we talked about. We talked about the TV show. We talked about the li going to the library to find a DVD if they needed it or... Okay, what about this? What about a person that says, okay, Heather, I've been walking. Like, I'm, I'm walking. I can walk three miles in an hour. And um, I want to run my first 5K, but I don't know how to get from this point where I'm walking to now I want to run. What do I do? Just go out and start just jogging a little and just start running a little bit at a time. Um, but there's also the Couch to 5K app, which I've heard is very good, but I never used it. I just went out, went on a trail, and picked a tree to run to. Mm -hmm. And then I'd get to the tree, and then I'd find a sign. And then I'd get to the sign. Um, then I, that's just how I kept progressing. And I just, every time I went out, I'd try to get farther than that sign and get to maybe a rock or a tree or whatever on that trail. Right. Or if you're on a road, um, we used to run our block. We, and it was, you know, the first times were hard, three times around a mile. Right. And then after that, we progressed to running all the way around a big block. And so adding, you're doing just kept adding. Well, you're doing a walk run. So or you can pick, walk run. Yeah. Yes. So so you're on a walk and you say, okay, I want to try to jog to that foam pole. And yeah, it's not gonna be fun. The first time your heart's gonna feel like it's gonna explode and blah, blah, blah. and then you're gonna make it to the foam pole and then you can take a little break and then you say, okay, I'm gonna walk a foam pole, run a foam pole, walk. A pole. Mm -hmm. Or if you want to do it the easy way, just download the Couch to 5K app and there's a little dude in your ear that tells you, okay, run, you know, now walk now. I um, mean, you can put some tunes on, and I think that's a good way to graduate into running. So it doesn't have to to be this switch that you know. I walk and now I run like you you should mix it up you should and and it's also better for your body to get used to a new thing I mean especially for somebody like me being 400 pounds it's my body was not used to running so everything was screwed up for decades and now you know so it's good to ease into that and after you you know meet that little goal of just getting to the tree you'll be just so excited that you got that far but don't reward yourself with food right what do we do then? unless it's an apple yeah reward your dog with food but not yourself um go buy something from the wall mall that you're walking at yeah i didn't just say that did i oh, okay I so um more tips more tips to get going can't think of any more mm -hmm. okay so here's the thing um, you can you can make all the excuses you want for why you can't move, why you can't do this. But there, I in my mind, like I believe that everyone can do something more than they're doing now. I holy crap! Do you know? I was just gonna talk. I swear. And I can't say it because I'll she'll get cry. Too emotional. I see. So I'm, I'm not emotional. I'm not emotional. So you so have I don't, to say it. Yeah, because I never lose it. I've been it. talking about this for a day. So actually, and I don't, I don't know. Did you see what she just posted? No. Okay, and it's just like just today, it was crazy. Oh, today, yes. yeah. Yeah. So That's what okay, I'm about. we have this friend, and um, we will keep her anonymous, but we'll say her name is Annette. Um, and she, like me and her, were talking back and forth, and she's telling me about all these walks she's going on, like day after day after day after day. And I'm like, man, she is killing it. Then all of a sudden one day she messages me back that she finally got some plastic to cover the seats on her walker. And I'm like, walker? Like, and she's she's walking like miles. So I think where she lives is kilometers, but she's walking 
and uh, she forgot to tell me that she's walking with a walker, right? And she's in the rain, but she has to cover up the, the seat cushion on the walker. It's one of those you can turn around and there's a seat because it comes home soaked every time. And I'm thinking, oh my goodness. Like, and I'm complaining, and I'm complaining that there's a little drizzle outside and she's like having to cover her walker. Well, Annette is, is like, she is killing it. And now, um, you know, she, she went out today, no walker. And this is a per I know, don't start crying. This is a person that you know she could she couldn't walk to her front door, but she's persistent, and that's the thing. Like, you know, we're all capable of doing something, and if it means that you can't even get off the couch, you still got your arms. You know, grab grab a whatever a can of beans or something and lift them. Just do something, because there's there's something really special about exercise. Um, not not for weight loss per se. Um, but it gets, first of all, it makes you proud of yourself that you're doing something. It gets you on a routine. You know, it gets your blood moving through your body. You know, it just does so much. It does so much for you. And stop crying. Well, Annette is really cool. Annette is, is one of the most inspiring people on the planet. Mm -hmm. You know, and then you got Nalita and her family. I mean, they're out there, you know, they're they're legally blind and they're running you know and then you know i get it like everyone has their problems but there are so many people out there that like you know legit they don't have excuses and they don't let them happen you know right and sometimes that makes people mad i'm gonna be honest with you sometimes i i've had people that don't really know me that well and they'll say well i tried to run but i have bad knees um if I ever showed you what the MRIs to my knees look like, like I should not be walking, but I still do. I still run. I'm, I'm not run real fast, but, and then someone says they have sore knees. So it's hard. You know? Right. But, it, but then again, if you do have bad knees or sore knees, then find something that can help you to move that maybe won't hurt them as much but that you're just still out there moving right but here's part of the problem if if your knees are sore and again i'm not a doctor i've said that like four times now um but if your knees are sore i feel like the worst thing you can do is stop moving them because you know it, it will if you go to the arthritis foundation the first thing they do um to to um i lost the word i'm looking for you know, to treat arthritis, the first thing they tell you to do is move um, because your bone, you know, you got to keep stuff moving. And that's a lot of a lot of my pain. Ninety percent of my pain came from not moving. And it's the same with your father. Yeah. And in fact, and I know I can almost see the website that our. The Arthritis Foundation says the first thing you can do to prevent arthritis is move. Mm -hmm. So move, you know, even if it's uncomfortable, move. You know, you know, I come down the stairs, I feel like an old man some mornings, you know. But here, like for me, like, see, for me, this is going to probably piss people off. But for me, it hurt just as much to sit on the couch and complain about my pain as it does to go get brace burns in the back of my legs trying to run. Now, that's the truth. Like, that's the truth. The, the pain that I felt was a lot greater on the couch, mentally, physically, and spiritually, than it is to go run and have sore ankles today. True. And, and there's other things, too. I mean, I come home from a run, what no one sees is my feet go right into ice as soon as I get home. You know, and you've been kind of bad on stuff too. But mm -hmm. the key is to move, you know, move something. Every Everybody can move something. Yes. Okay. So any more tips? Do we have more tips? I hope people put tips in there. I haven't been reading anything, but. Um... Hi, Doris. Yeah, Diane says the lady that your friend, the chair. Oh, she does have Yeah, DVD. she has DVDs. She's high tech now. So. Great. Um, yeah. So do what you can. Do something. You know, that's the thing. I, I feel like people just do nothing because they make excuses. At least try. At least try. And sometimes I think you surprise yourself. Yep. So couch to 5K is huge. Um, bicycles. Swimming is another one. I mean, not just swimming. It's another community ed thing. Mm -hmm. uh, if you check it out, if you go to your community ed. So basically, if you pay school taxes because... 
you live somewhere. Um, and even if you don't pay school tax, I think it's just, just if, if you're, you're a resident, if you're in the district, um, you can call your local high school, guaranteed they have a pool, and guaranteed that it's open to the public for certain slots. I think I think ours costs like three bucks for three hours. Mm -hmm. um, and even if you don't want to swim, just get in there. If you have bad knees, bad ankles, a lot of Eller Stanlos yes. people are doing this. They just walk right. back and forth. Mm -hmm. And what that does is it does two things. Walking across the shallow end of the pool, um, one, takes all the shock out of your joints because you're not weightless, but you're significantly decreasing weight. The second thing it does is it puts a lot of resistance on your legs. So when you go to move, you know, it's not air, it's water. So it's harder to move and you can build up a lot of strength. That's, that's one of those things where, um, you know, if you have a bad knee or whatever, you can walk in the water and eventually you'll build up the strength and you'll get the range of motion. And then maybe you'll get back out running on the road. Or walking. Or walking. And you know what? I think at the end of the day, here's another thing. Um, physical therapy, like <laughs> we are both becoming professionals. Um, you don't have to. I mean, you should. Like I like I am sold on my PT, like, and so are you. Mm -hmm. um, I think it's a very good investment for both of us. But you don't have to necessarily go to a professional physical therapist if you really don't want to, you can go on YouTube, and if you have a bum knee or a bad hip, you can find all the strengthening exercises demonstrated the right way. Someone will talk you through them. Um, so instead of sitting there and complaining how your hip hurts or your knee hurts, do something about it. You know, kind of be your own patient or your own science experiment. Um, there, like all the information's out there. You you even go on YouTube for some of your exercises. Because I'll forget how to, because I'll forget how to do them, and I want to remember how to do them. So yeah, so I'll look it up. And I mean, today we are all so blessed with the internet. Hmm, or curse to find stuff that you need to know. Yeah, no, the information I mean, is a, out there for free. That's what I'm saying. Sure. Yes. Yeah, I'm just messing with you. But yeah, you can go find PT exercises, strengthening, you know, ankles. I'm doing a lot of work like balancing on my ankles. Balance is huge. Range of motion is huge. And I've said this a million times. Um, if you if you do any kind of fitness for range of motion, it's not to win marathons. It's not to win triathlons. It's to stay out of the nursing home. Like that's the goal. Like, and I know that sounds so stupid because we're like so young. We're almost kids, right? No, but that's well, you it. Look older than I yeah, am. I know. I know. I won't say who's really older, but the thing is, though, we're watching. Like, as you know, people around us are aging. Um, you don't go to the nursing home, you know, because you can take care of yourself. And the two biggest things, statistically, people that can't get on and off the toilet go to the nursing home, and people that can't get in and out of bed go to the nursing home. Um, so this stupid thing, like mine started with getting up and down out of a chair a couple times. That's like huge, mm -hmm. like that's huge. So do what you can yep. and don't compare yourself to other people and, um, be your own science experiment, you know, watch videos for PT stuff on physical, I think in Canada, they don't call it PT, physical therapy, mm -hmm. you know, like strengthening and stabilization muscles and like rehab stuff. You can do that even like even if you don't have a bum knee but you want to make your knees better, you know, go do some YouTube searches of how to make your knees stronger. Okay? Mm -hmm. Anything else? Okay, we went 50 minutes, which isn't too bad. It's not too bad. But we this started is, late. We start, yes, well, no, it's, it's, it doesn't matter when we started. But um, I hope this was helpful. Yes. Um, next week, We'll do a very short one. I promise it'll only be 15 minutes. I'm trying to get away from doing these huge long ones, but there was a lot to unpack here. I honestly, sincerely, from the bottom of my heart, hope it helps someone. Yes. And um, If you have any more questions, message us. We'll, we'll put them in the comments and oh, we'll yeah. try to get back to you. Right. Because I'm getting like hammered with messages right now, which is good. I try to get to them. Um, but if you like this, if you think it'll help someone, share it, tag someone, whatever you're going to do. And have a fantastic week. And if you have the day off tomorrow, enjoy. And eat plants and move your body. Yeah, and move your body especially. And just do a little bit more than you did yesterday. Yep. I'm paraphrasing. See ya. Do you want to say goodbye? Oh, goodbye. <laughs>